Hey, hello friends. Welcome to my channel. SAP SD and ABAP League support. Today, we'll discuss about one of the complex business scenario or SAP SD real-time scenarios. Okay, so this is basically relevant to the third party process only but here there's a slight modification to that existing third party scenario let's go ahead and discuss what's the modification that we have done to the standard third party scenario okay for example if you see this third party scenario here okay so for example, sales organization for third person is uh, Germany, for example, this is German sales organization. And what we'll do, so vendor deliver the goods, because of a third person scenario, vendor deliver the goods to the customer, right? And he, vendor only take care of that shipping activities to the customer. When the delivery has been happened to the customer, then company will issue one invoice to the customer. That's you have to invoice, and uh, company will pay to the goods that has been delivered to the customer to the vendor via Miro. Right? This is an existing process of third-party scenario which we all are aware of. This coming to intercompany sales. Intercompany sales, what will happen? The sales happen between two different plans, which are, I mean, two different company codes are the selling, selling sales organization and delivering sales organization's company code. You see here, the selling sales organization is Germany here, and the plant in the intercompany sales order we see the plant is relevant for some other company code that is assigned to different company code so the stock the goods will be delivered to the customer from the intercompany plant only then what will happen here the selling sales organization issues you have to invest with the end customer then the selling sales organization will pay to the delivered goods to the company code of the intercompany plant. This an intercompany billing document will happen. Right? So in case of third party sales, the plant vendor plant is relevant to the same company code only. It's a different company code. So for example, Germany is selling sales organization here and the plant also relevant to the same company code in case of intercompany sales the sales are in germany the plant belong to the belgium company code so that's why it's intercompany sales and coming to this um, actual our complex scenario is that it's third party scenario only but the plant from where the vendor going to deliver to the customer that is relevant to the different company code again you see the flow here the selling sales organization in germany and uh, uh, the plant belongs to belgium okay from this plant only the vendor delivers the goods to the customer right then what will happen selling sales organization issues you have to invest to the end customer and that vendor delivers the goods to the customer as the plants are different here i mean that uh, company codes are different here right germany and belgium so intercompany the company will take place here and moreover from belgium to vendor the myra will take place belgium company code to vendor myra will take place not from germany to vendor you see the difference here third party and our current 
complex scenario in our complex scenario in third party scenario okay we are going to create one intercompany also intercompany building also takes place that's the main difference in standard flow no intercompany will be created whereas in the case of our scenario intercompany building also takes place that's the difference between the existing third party and our third party scenario hope i made it clear okay uh, the question that you might get into your mind is that how come or how is it possible that we can create intercompany invoice with reference to a sales order so far we know that in case of sto scenarios intercompany will be created where delivery is there if you take the sto intercompany scenario po will be there for the tpo we will create a delivery for the delivery only we will create the intercompany invoice okay that is an sto intercompany scenario and coming to standard intercompany scenario like sales order outbound delivery then f2 then iv that means f2 and iv created with reference to single delivery so these two scenarios we understood that intercompany will be created with reference to an outbound delivery only but in case of this scenario intercompany will be created with reference to a sales order so how we are going to achieve how we are going to create the intercompany invoice in the upcoming sessions we can discuss about that today we will discuss about end to end flow how this scenario entirely works okay so if you see this diagram okay there's one portal available for example it's a manta portal what happens is that in manta so we have three parties involved here three parties okay manta and sap and this is the vendor manta sap and vendor so let's go through one by one now okay so in that portal manta just creation of an order will takes place it's a portal only for example if you take that uh, amazon uh, app amazon app or flipkart app this is a portal right or you can log into that amazon website also there's a portal so where we place an order right we place an order in amazon or uh, flipkart portal it's uh, correlate with manta portal here this is manta portal like amazon or flipkart so once you place an order in amazon flipkart then uh, the order will be placed then that will be issued to the vendor so the vendor might be located anywhere in india right uh, the company basically who is going to deliver the goods to us right the goods will takes place entirely by the vendor only so flipkart amazon also we can consider as a third party scenario okay so we pay to that uh, flipkart amazon and that amazon will pay to that vendor ultimately okay fine so let's come to this uh, scenario so in manta portal we will uh, place an order order will be created here uh, whenever order will be created that will come to our system sap system so here what will happen they will create an order in that portal then that will be created as xml file in the background that xml file will be transferred to pi team our pi team or xi team that pa team will will push the data to our sap system uh, when it reaches to an sap system it will become an incoming idoc to our system okay incoming idoc the message type will be ordrs that means order create interface so this is the first interface in this scenario remember this interface okay it's an order create interface i have published a video about this order create interface in the interface playlist also you can check out that this is the first interface to create an order through incoming idoc it's an order create interface and uh, this is the message type this is the message type and uh, basic type is ordrs05 this is the basic type 
okay so order came to our system order is created now in sap system now now let's go one by one so once order is created what will happen then uh, suppose if the credit limit has been exceeded for the customer or uh, fi technical issues old oldest open items or payment card payment card authorization has been failed any of the reasons credit check might occur in that order so credit check is failed means order will go into credit block so whenever order will go into credit block then pr you know right in case of third party scenarios pr will be generated when we save the order but if order in credit block then pr po won't be generated it's controlled through uh either one not one routine i think one not one or one not two routine in the transfer of requirements so this is controlled through this one of the routine which will be stop creating the prpo whenever order goes to credit block okay let me confirm you that so i'm going to spr path sales and distribution basic functions uh, available check and transfer of requirements transfer of requirements yeah maintain requirements for purchase and assembly orders yeah this is 102 okay this is 102 so 101 for standard orders for which confirmed quantity will become zero whenever order goes to credit block so it's a one or two routine so with help of this routine only code is written to um, stop applying the stop uh, creating the prs okay this will happen so what will happen so now credit check is happened right so if credit check is happened means so no prp will be generated okay after releasing the credit block PR PO will be generated automatically. So as per the schedule in category setup, PR will be generated automatically. And uh, if you want to generate PO automatically, then we need to do some configuration. That is that in that um, sales organization level determination, we need to specify the ALE parameters. So ALE parameters will be decided and it required to generate the PO automatically in the background mm, you see here the yearly data for purchase order so we should specify the plant here store location purchase organization purchasing group vendor number order type so we should specify these details in the background in this sales organization level when this is done we need to enable the automatic PO creation in that item category level there is a one checkbox is allowed you see hmm, you see yeah you see this one create PO automatic so this should be enabled and one more configuration in required in the material master also to create the PO and the vendor and also we should do some changes to generate the PO. So these configurations required to generate the PO automatically. Right? So PR PO will be created after releasing the credit block. So this is the interface one. <coughs> okay, so now PO has been created. So in the PO one outbound IDAC will be created. Okay, that is interface two. Is interface two okay? Output will be triggered in PO, which is a medium six 
output type is nothing but an idoc edi distribution edi output type so this output will be triggered it will go to pi from from pi it will go to the vendor right so what this uh, po will carry is that so once uh, po is uh, created those information like uh, quantity delivery date shipping address right everything will be shared with the vendor you see the last one is vendor so the outbound idoc output triggered from the po will be sent to the vendor so whenever vendor receives this data so whenever vendor receives this data so he will send one acknowledgement to again po so this this screenshot is very blur but uh, hope you can see this one let me show you this yeah so so uh, acknowledgement will be sent to that uh, po with all the information like uh, delivery date shipping address details quantity everything will be sharing with the vendor when the vendor receives that uh, data he will send an acknowledgement to our system this is interface 3 are you getting acknowledge acknowledgement from vendor okay vendor to po it's in incoming idoc this one is in outbound idoc so we'll get some confirmation from vendor saying that i have received all the required information from you so whenever we get this data in that um, in that PO, there is an option to check this one checkbox available acknowledged something is there that will be enabled whenever we get this IDAC data okay then that is done then what will happen next okay then we received that uh, acknowledgement from vendor to PO now what that is done means then the vendor will do the goods issue he will do the goods issue he, he delivers the goods to the customer so whenever he delivers you see this one okay whenever he does the delivery to the customer then again what will happen it will update those information in the idoc again i mean in the po one more interface now interface 4 interface 4 updating the asn updating that uh, delivery details into a po there's one tab called confirmation that po in the confirmation tab we will see that goods issue has been done some information we can update there so this is also so this is vendor to tnb i mean vendor to pivo and uh, this is pivo to vendor and again so whenever pj is completed again this is also vendor to pivo okay so we, we we discussed about the fourth interface now okay once that is done so now good session has been done same information came back to our PO. once that is done then the customer is eligible for pod relevant that means the customer ha will be confirmed back to the vendor again saying that i received the goods right so in this case vendor whenever vendor receives the pod confirmation then he will inform same thing to 
pu same information to pu again and this is the fifth interface so pod completed information will be sent to pu so this time migo will uh, so based on this pu confirmation migo will takes place for the pu and this is also relevant to vendor to PO interface only. You see here. So whenever we receive POD confirmation from a vendor, then in SAP for that PO, MIGO will takes place. <coughs> then as usual, customer invoice will be issued to that end customer as F2 billing invoice then and one more thing is that as the transaction happening between the two different company codes right here the selling sales organization is germany so the order is created with different sales organization like germany france us any anything is there in the sales organization level but the plant in the vendor location it is relevant for belgium only the plant is belgium but any other sales organization can do the transaction between this plant. That's why we are creating one intercompany invoice here. Okay. So F2 is done. IV intercompany also done. Then once, the, once both are done, then what we are going to do? So we are going to issue. We are going to issue one. Um, then now, now company needs to pay. Right. So that a German company needs to pay Miro to that vendor. This happening in the last flow here, if you see here. You see, this is the vendor invoice. The last settlement will happen in the this invoice. So, three kind of invoice will take place here. You have two invoice, intercompany invoice and Miro invoice. These are the three invoices will take place. And you see something in yellow. Sometimes, uh, if anything wrong in the order level, uh, that will be rejected, right? Then it will be rejected sales order. And this is saying that whenever order and credit check, then uh, PRPO won't be carried out. Something like this. So this is one of the complex scenario relevant to third party which is the, which is the combination of both intercompany and third party sales so in this flow also in third party sales we are uh, providing that free goods to the customer free goods item and uh, in this flow also we are creating the return order for third party order so entire flow will happen here okay so Please check out this and go through this. And if you still have any concerns or queries in your mind, please do comment and I will try to answer that. Okay, in upcoming sessions, we will see how can we achieve this complete end to end requirement? What are the configurations required? We'll discuss about this in upcoming sessions. Okay, bye for now. We'll meet in the next video. Thanks, everyone.